What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news, join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Roman Reigns to leave for a short while after WrestleMania, The Rock's plans after WrestleMania, an update on Charlotte Flair, Tony Khan explains why he recently released a number of wrestlers, the fans boo The Rock for being one hour late, a big entrance planned for WWE Champion, John Cena can't do anything at WrestleMania, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. And now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Now our first story looks at is Roman Reigns leaving for a short while after WrestleMania? At top of today's news is the question of whether Roman Reigns is taking time off after Mania. While this wouldn't normally be big news as Roman is known for taking time off after major shows, the Tribal Chief's recent comments that he plans to retire once he drops the Undisputed Championship has some fans wondering what the future holds. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter reported, I don't think anyone believes Reigns would retire with a loss and that WWE has taught fans not to believe it, but given his schedule, it's probable he'd take some time off. If Reigns wants to retire, the WWE would have him work a match without plenty of build-up promoting it as Roman's last match ever, or that it's a must-win match. They noted, given his limited schedule, one wouldn't even expect him on the show again until the as yet unannounced next Saudi Arabia show, last word being on 25th May, and the 3rd August SummerSlam show in Cleveland. Depending on what happens at WrestleMania, the WWE may have Roman walk due to one or more Bloodline members betraying him or the WWE working an injury angle. Next up, The Rock's plans after WrestleMania. While we're on the topic of top superstars taking time off, what about The Rock? If you've been keeping up on your wrestling news throughout our daily news videos, you know that The Rock is expected to take time off after WrestleMania as he has two films on his schedule, The Smashing Machine and the live-action adaptation of Moana. The Rock and longtime friend and writing partner Brian Gerwitz spoke with ESPN about The Rock's WWE return. The Rock addressed his future in the WWE. I'm not off the board after WrestleMania, I'm still on the board and I will always be a part of this. And we are in it now. This is our thing and will be forever our thing. Gerwitz discussed The Rock's WWE future, but I do think there's going to be a Rock presence in WWE going forward until whenever he doesn't want to. I could definitely say that this isn't over a day after WrestleMania and I'm going to go off into the sunset now. The Rock's deal to sit on TKO Holdings Board of Directors reportedly has an incentive built into it. There's plenty of buzz over whether these incentives make it worth The Rock's time to enter the ring. Although The Rock has many business ventures outside of wrestling, it appears he's back in the WWE, even if it's in a capacity that seems him work the occasional match and make appearances to forward storylines. If the final boss takes over the bloodline, as some fans believe, he could leave things to Paul Heyman to handle. At the same time, he pursues his other interests, making occasional appearances to keep fans interested in things. Next up, an update on Charlotte Flair's injury. How is Charlotte Flair doing after she suffered several injuries, including an ACL, MCL and meniscus tear during a match on SmackDown against Oscar? It's time for an update from the Queen herself as Flair appeared at a Make-A-Wish event during WrestleMania week, revealing, 13 weeks out, I ran and jumped for the first time last week. I don't think I'm going to make it this weekend, but you never know. Flair said that while she may not wrestle, she'll be at Mania to support her fellow WWE superstars. Charlotte also told fans she's thrilled to have her husband Andrade back in the WWE. Next up, Tony Khan explains why he released a number of wrestlers. Why did AEW release a slew of wrestlers, not to mention a ring announcer recently? While WWE fans are used to the company releasing its superstars, Tony Khan has said in the past that AEW wasn't in the habit of releasing its talent who are under contract. The talent named Dasha Gonzalez, manager Jose the Assistant, and wrestlers Anthony Henry, Stu Grayson, Parker Bordreau, Gravity, The Boys, aka the Tate Twins, Slim J, and George Joel. However, AEW's release policy appears to have changed. Meltzer commented on the AEW's recent releases as well as remarks that the AEW president made during a media call promoting the upcoming Ring of Honor pay-per-view. Khan has since said that it was a budgetary decision and that they are going to continue to go after the major free agents for the rest of the year. He also said, in talking about Henry, that he suffered a broken jaw on an independent show and thus wasn't available, but did say that he's since changed his mind and that Henry will be back as part of the Work Horseman team when he recovers. It's unusual for a promotion to cut a wrestler when they're injured, but as Khan pointed out, Henry was injured while working at an indie show, thus AEW may feel it's not obligated to pay him to sit out during his recovery which is fair enough. 
According to The Observer, Khan noted different reasons for one set of the releases. The only other names asked about on the press call were the boys. He said that they had missed multiple TV tapings and that's why the decision was made. However, the boys Brent responded to a tweet from The Observer about the reason for the boys' release. Far from true, stay tuned. AEW has so much talent under their contract that it's surprising to see some observers that, that the promotion hasn't trimmed the fat from its budget. Do you think more cuts are coming? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, fans boo The Rock for being one hour late. The fans attending the WWE Fan Expo The World were none too happy yesterday when The Rock, who was scheduled for a 4pm appearance at the event, showed up nearly two hours late. According to reports from people attending the event, Fans were irate, reportedly chanting, Rocky sucks, a whole chance and this is BS. As they waited for the final boss to arrive, The Rock told the fans he had a good reason for being late, but told those in attendance that they didn't want to hear it. The Rock was supposed to be here at 4 o'clock, is that why you were booing? You're booing because The Rock was a little late, is that why you were booing? Are you sure? Yeah! You want to know? Yeah! Why The Rock? Yeah! What's late? He was watching YouTube, watching Jalen Hurts lose in the playoffs again. You boo because it's the truth. Now, The Rock is showing up. You've got greatness in front of you. You stand there, shut your mouth, and enjoy the ride that The Rock is taking you on. What do you guys think? Was there a real reason why The Rock was late? Is he just playing a heel to perfection? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, a big entrance planned for WWE Champion. And get ready for a spectacular entrance for Women's World Champion Rhea Ripley as before she defends the title against Becky Lynch, PW Insider is reporting that Motionless in White, the band that plays Ripley's entrance theme, will be in person to perform. This isn't the first time an artist has shown up at the showcase of the Immortals and rumor has it that Cody Rhodes may also get a similar treatment. WrestleMania is called the grandest stage of them all for good reason and fans should expect plenty of exciting entrances on Saturday and Sunday. Which wrestler do you think will have the best entrance though? Let us know in the comments. Next up, The Rock does Michael Cole dirty again. While The Rock was late, he still found time to abuse Michael Cole, much as he did during his heyday during the Attitude Era when he would tease Cole during interviews and such. During Rock's appearance, Cole showed up and recalled an interview from back in the day when The Rock placed a t-shirt over his head. When Cole hinted that he'd like an apology, The Rock produced his new Final Boss t-shirt and, surprise surprise, put it on Cole's head. Roll the clip. Yeah! What the Final Boss is cooking! Say it, Michael Cole. Is cooking! Now this seemed all pretty cool, but it's unknown if the fans in attendance felt that it was worth a near two hour wait. Even funnier, in the back, you could hear Bailey saying, give Michael Cole a rock bottom. Rocky, can you Cole pretended that he couldn't hear though. Next up, John Cena can't do anything at WrestleMania. Now is Cena actually appearing at Mania? While the 16-time world champion's appearance seems to be a foregone conclusion, he may not be able to get involved in any matches. Meltzer reported, John Cena will be shooting the second season of Peacemaker starting in June. The last word we got is that he's free that day, would like to, but physically would be limited. When asked about Cena, Undertaker and Austin, the answer was that they're not going to wrestle in matches, which at this point would be the expected answer. While Cena may be open to some fisticuffs, it's important to remember he needed surgery on both arms following his last run in the WWE and he may be hesitant to risk his health before the shooting for Peacemaker begins. Next up, Cody Rhodes hints at a new championship belt. Is Cody Rhodes going to win the Undisputed Championship at WrestleMania 40? Well, that remains to be seen, but Cody told fans there may be a change to the belt's appearance during his appearance at The World. The WWE changes title belts on a regular basis, but is this too soon? After all, it was only last year when they finally crafted a title belt to represent the Undisputed Championship rather than have Reigns carry the WWE Championship and Universal Championship to the ring. Now, we've all heard before that Cody wants the return of the Winged Eagle belt, but will it actually make a return? Whatever the case, Cody's popularity makes it likely the WWE will want to capitalize him on winning the title, and if that indeed happens, they could produce new merch for the title belt. After all, what good is wrestling if you can't make a fortune off marketing your promotion's most popular superstars? And finally, did Cody trademark a term before WWE? 
And last but not least, did Cody Rhodes pull a fast one on the WWE by filing a trademark for the term Renaissance Era or, or Renaissance Era? You may recall Rhodes recently labeled the current era of the WWE as the Renaissance Era, much as past WWE high points of nicknames such as the Rock and Wrestling Era, the Attitude Era, and the Ruthless Aggression Era. Rhodes filed for the trademark on 3rd April, and some fans see this as a big move on Cody's part, especially if the WWE liked the sound of it. Some fans think this could mean big bucks for Cody as he could sell the rights or license the name. Others see it as a short-sighted move as TKO Holdings may not be big on a superstar going into business for themselves with intellectual property. If Rhodes jobs to Roman again and ends up on NXT, we may have an idea how management feels. What do you guys think though? W or L? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.